I come from Doom World and SureDog, and I have a Discord too, to this place, YouTube, where I'm going to talk about some reboot. You guys mostly know me from playing like Doom videos or filming my cats and stuff, but recently I played a Doom map where somebody completely created mainframe in the little Doom map. Of all the things, like, like uh, my two favorite things somehow have merged together. And we, we go to get like cocaine and waffles. So that got me down the rabbit hole. I was watching all the reboot episodes again and thinking about it. Like, I grew up with this Canadian show from 1993. Like, it was the first time an entire show was made in CGI. And um, I really just want to go through and, and talk about it. So here we go. All right, welcome to Inside a Computer. This is Mainframe, and right off the bat we meet Bob, the Guardian antivirus guy who's being chased by these two incompetent guys that work for Megabyte, who's like the town virus. And Megabyte wants a favor from Bob, but he's not giving into it because that's sketchy, so... Megabyte keeps, like, being a petty mob boss and, like, trashing up the place where Bob, his girlfriend, and that annoying kid like to eat. So another thing that's happening in the story is the user likes to drop these games that terrorize the town because if you lose one of these games, you basically get murdered, and nobody in town can really play these games so good except for Bob, so... Megabyte decides to just stop him from playing these games, right? So, of course... The person who owns the computer is a bastard and kills everybody. And then you get this shocking scene eight minutes into the first episode. Can they win without Bob? I hope. Game over. User wins. Game over. User wins. The whole sector's nullified! Offline! They lost! Well, it wasn't your fault. There was nothing you or we could do. If I had just done Megabyte his little favor, none of this would have happened! So yeah, because Bob's a pushover, he basically goes to Megabyte's house, and he has this cool little Megabyte hair-shaped door that he goes in. He goes in the basement and sees this big army, and Megabyte wants him to turn this, like, tear into a portal to the supercomputer so he can take over everything. But because Bob's so incompetent, he can't get out of there until Dot saves him, and then they try to run away as a game is coming down. Apparently the game can just turn this into a portal anyway, so he literally should have just waited like five minutes and not even need to tell Bob he has a portal. And you know, he would could have just done it on his own, but... So now they're in the game, right? Megabyte takes over the virus, they have to chase Megabyte, and then, you know... That's basically it. They thwart Megabyte, and then that's basically the crux of the show, which is just these guys dealing with viruses, and the show gets a lot more in-depth later on, so let's just keep this train a-going, eh? So in the next episode, we get to spend some time with Enzo, which is the annoying kid that even the showrunners didn't want, but the network was like, no, you gotta have an annoying kid, you gotta have an annoying little Enzo running around, so the, the show people were like, fuck you, we will, and we are, we are gonna name him Enzo, look it up, they actually named him Enzo. And he's so annoying that even the other characters in the show can't deal with him. Enzo. Enzo. Enzo's the little brother format and Dot's the big businesswoman who... No, Enzo. No! Stop! Ugh. If we don't... Enzo, Enzo, slow down. Bob! Ugh, my back. Anywho, so Megabyte tells Enzo to deliver a mask bomb to Hexadecimal, the other virus in the city who's like completely insane, and Megabyte slips it through a vid window, which means like he could teleport things through windows, so he probably could have just like teleported it directly behind her when she wasn't even looking. But Dot's like, no, that's too dangerous, you can't deliver a face bomb, even though she tries to kill him at two other points in this episode. Come on! So Hexadecimal sends Bob flying, and then a game happens, and they all race to the game to try to warn Bob, but the game explodes anyway. And somehow they're just kind of fine, and um, yeah, that's the end of that episode. Next one. Alright, here we go again with Megabyte. He's got another ambitious plan. This time he has a magnet and is somehow trying to rip a hole open to the supercomputer with it. Man, Megabyte's always up to something. If only we had the ambition and drive of Megabyte, like, he gets shit done. Of course, Bob sees this from like a mile away, shows up and fucks up the workers there, because, you know, Megabyte's workers are incompetent. Megabyte gets so mad that he squeezes his dad and then has to take his legs out of the floor to like, put his legs on to go after Bob. Yeah, that's right, Megabyte can actually take his legs off and put them back on. Like, imagine if people had the actual luxury to be able to take their legs off, like, I'd do it all the time because 
Have you ever sat in a chair and you're like, oh, I can't get comfortable? Like, you want to, should I cross my legs this way? Or what do I do with my legs? Just, if I could take my legs off and put them on a coat rack, that'd be like the greatest day of my life. Like, imagine if Bob was able to steal Megabyte's legs and then, like, hold them over him and be like, hey, man, I got your legs. You can't do anything now. And Megabyte's like, oh, man, give me back my legs, buddy. Like, you know, like, that... Oh, yeah, back to the episode. So, yeah, Bob gets the magnet, and he has to be very careful because you'll get deleted if you touch it. And I love this face Bob makes when he almost shits himself when Megabyte almost gets him. So Bob takes his magnet to the diner, and everybody shits himself because magnets are dangerous as shit. So he's like, hey, Enzo... Now would be a good time to let you play with a sledgehammer, wouldn't it? And then he almost kills his sister. So the only way to cure somebody for magnet poisoning is to get them some slow food. So Bob has to hurry up and go get some takeout. But before Bob can deliver his chicken sandwich, he gets caught in a game and he has to do this game thing. So when Bob's in the game, he has to bust through a window. But the way he does it is he actually teleports through the window by saying glitch BSNP. Uh, the reason for that was because BSMP stands for Business, Business Standards and Practices. The censors of the show wouldn't let Bob jump through a window. He had to teleport through it because the censors are like, no man, kids are going to just start like smashing through windows in droves. You can't smash through a window in a kid show. It's the most fucked up thing ever. Anyway, Bob does find Dot eventually in the game and it turns out she's fine. She was just faking it. All right, the next episode has some fun virus stuff at the start. We got Megabyte stealing something from Hexadecimal. Something I've always found fascinating about Reboot is virus stuff, and this is some good stuff, because, like, Megabyte steals a thing, and then, like, his army has to, like, hold her back, and there's some, there's some cool scenes, and, like, Reboot has the best music, and I just, I love all of this. So yeah, it turns out that the thing Megabyte stole was actually on purpose from Hexadecimal. It's like a, a Medusa thing. It's turning everything into stone. And it's actually Hexadecimal's like most clever idea. Somehow she was able to pull this off even though she's usually like too crazy to be coherent. But it's not just Megabyte, it's the whole town. It like takes over the dog. We get it, he fell down. So they try to hide the whole town in the central principal office, but it gets in there anyway. And yeah, it turns out Bob's immune, so the only thing left to do is to go and try to talk Hex out of it. All he has to do to Hex is be like, hey, this is boring now, can we not do this? And Hex is like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I love Hex. It's a shame that we, we don't see her again in season one. We don't see her again until like more than halfway through season two. It's like the writers didn't know what to do with her, but she's great. Hex has some more fun stuff coming up though, eventually. Bob and Dot have a really pointless, really petty, really stupid argument the whole fucking episode. I'd like to have an argument, please. Alright, this next episode is right messed up. So Enzo's dog Frisket eats Megabyte's evil device thing and Megabyte needs it back, so what he decides to do is kidnap a child and bring him into his house to lure the dog there. And when the dog's there, he decides to try to cut him open to get his item back. But this whole premise is fucked. Like, remember earlier that wouldn't let Bob drop through glass because I thought that'd be too traumatic, but... They're showing kids this shit. Open him. Now. Open him? As an operate? <laughs> Alright guys, I just want to make sure you know that I do like this show. It's like a childhood favorite of mine, but I'm just calling out some stupid stuff in it. You see, the earlier episodes, it was finding its footing because this is like groundbreaking technology at the time. Like it took ages to make an episode of this. So there was no writing, there was no good writing. They outsourced that to other people while they focused on like creating the CGI. But as it gets going, you'll see this actually becomes a tremendously written great show. It's just, it's a bit of a hard start. <laughs> so anyway, the rest of this episode is kind of just like making Megabyte look bad. Cause I think Megabyte is one of my favorite villains. And this episode, he just gets outsmarted by a kid and his dog the whole time. And Everything about it looks stupid to the point, like at the end of the episode, he steps in dog shit, and then that's the end of it. <laughs> like, yeah, this episode was, was right off the rails, man.
All right, so this episode's amazing, and, and I'm not going to complain about this one. It's it's fun. It's pretty fun. It's very. It's actually important to the grand scheme of things. That's why when you're watching this series, some other episodes feel like a complete waste of time. But this is a actually most important episode of season one, maybe. Software pirates come into town. I love it. Like all the pirates are awesome, and and they just go around and they basically steal everything they can in the town to like a hilarious degree of like kleptomania. One of my favorite fucking scenes is they steal Bob's car right out his window. I just love how efficient they are at, like, stealing everything. They would steal the toilet paper right out of your hand before you could use it, you know? Like, they're crazy. This episode is just fun all the way through. There's all sorts of fun little fight sequences, and they even steal Bob. They steal everything. So Dot has to steal some rich, snooty, snoot guy's yacht to go chase them down and get them back. And because these pirates are all about profit and just trying to make as much as they can, Dot basically saves the day by showing them how they can make even more money, honestly. And then she becomes a pirate. And what a fun time. Like, so fun. It's a good one. So in the next episode, Enzo realizes that he really is a dumb, annoying kid. And everybody else is like, yeah, we know. We live with you every day. So Enzo goes up to Fong. I forgot to mention, Fong is like the senile mayor of the town. He tries to run things, but he's very aloof most of the time. So he thinks it's a smart idea to let Enzo hang out in this room full of dangerous things. Just don't touch all this dangerous, exciting stuff. I gotta go take a shit. So then Enzo messes with the clock speed of the computer to make everybody else stupider. He actually does more damage than any of the viruses were able to do up to this point. But because Enzo's not too smart to begin with, they had to make everybody really stupider. Congratulations! For what? For finding a way out of here! Enzo! <laughs> Anywho, Enzo rushes back to fix things, and of course, the user when his computer's running slow, is like, yeah, now would be a good time to play an Olympic game. Enzo reboots into a coach and has no choice but to watch his really incompetent teammates just lose points all day long. So Enzo decides to compete himself and decides to tell everybody to help the user instead because they're so useless that they actually slow him down. I am hoping to make your boots go faster. And then Enzo eventually does fix things and decides, yeah, I'll just stay a dumb kid, I guess. So we're at Bob's apartment this time, and Mike the TV is there, and Mike the TV is like the most annoying character of all time. And despite just being annoying and sort of like Jar Jar Banks, he's responsible for the ruination of everything, and secretly the most evil character in the show, but more on that later. Nobody is more chill than Bob, always like relaxed and laid back to like a stoner degree. Hey, you wanna listen to some records? But as chill as Bob is, he can't handle Mike. Mike is beyond annoying. Bob's always threatening to kill him, and then of course they all get stuck in a game. This whole episode takes place in this medieval game. And there's some role reversal here because Mike ends up being the warrior and Bob has to be a thief with a butter knife. It's sort of like a team building episode. They'll have to get together and work as a group, but there's a lot of arguing and stuff along the way. And this game is arduous and like non-ending. It just keeps going and the scenarios that end up in are just preposterous. It's a marathon, man. Mike eventually does save the day and they all get along and they're friends and things seem pretty happy. Until Mike talks some more and they're like, can you please fuck off? Just please, just give us a moment of you fucking off for once. So even though they spent the whole episode getting closer, they're still just fuck off, Mike. Just fuck off, would you? Mike! So now we get to meet a new character, Mouse. She's got a sexy ass. Indeed. Hey, she touched me! Hubba, hubba! Megabyte hires her to go inside Bob's brain as a little tiny, they're doing one of those, you know, shrink down, go inside a person kind of episodes, but they end up in Enzo instead. And Megabyte's like, oh, I'm in the wrong person. I'm in Enzo, but I can use this. I can get inside the core. So he makes Enzo walk inside a giant microwave core room and just kind of stand there. And Megabyte doesn't, I don't get it. Megabyte doesn't get off his ass this entire episode. What is his plan? How is having a kid inside a microwave beneficial to him like seriously somebody explain that to me anywho bob gets in there to to fight hack and slash and try to get enzo's brain back and he has a little heart to heart with mouse like what are you doing like you're you're microwaving a kid and she's like yeah that's pretty fucked i better stop can you forgive me and bob's like yeah man i'll totally forgive you i mean you have two boobs unlike dot she only has one so yeah i don't care that you tried to microwave that little kid we're friends whatever easily forgivable Barely a problem. No, we're good. Hey, since you guys are in Enzo's head anyway, do you want to cut some wires to make him, like, a little bit less annoying or whatever? I'm out of here. This place is too hot. 
All right, it's Enzo's birthday, so they all decide to play some more games on purpose. This is kind of wacky because when you think about it, they live in a place where games terrorize them all the time. They try to run away from games, and if they end up in a game, they have to fight for their life. You would think with so much game terrorization going on, they wouldn't want to see another game ever again, but here they are playing even more games on their time off. What the hell? This game looks kind of fucked, too. So Bob has to keep Enzo distracted the whole time while Dot plans out the festivities. And the best part is because the broadcast business and standards were so like, have given them such a hard time the entire show with ridiculous censorship. Put a big jab at them by making one of the coordinators this really disagreeable person who just shuts every single solitary thing down. So even though they're heavily censored, they're getting some comedy out of it. You've rejected every act. Give me one good reason why we can't put this guy in the show. Cause I can't. This is full of too many pop culture references to name as well. The entire talent show thing is, is just one hilarious, silly thing after another. And for some reason, this moment with Fong really gets me. Fong! Unforgettable! I have no idea what the next line is. I uh, thank you, Fong. Next. <gasps> so Enzo does make it to his birthday party, and he turns from zero one to one zero, which is binary for two. And Dot sings him a little song. And although this is a little bit cringy, this whole thing is just celebrating Enzo's birthday. And she was going to give him a kiss on the cheek, which is like an older sister kissing a younger brother on the cheek. That's totally fine. But the censors were like, incest alert, you can't have older siblings kissing younger siblings on the fucking cheek. Like we're not talking mouth to mouth or anything here. It's so messed up she couldn't kiss him on the cheek. Like that's all it was. They weren't allowed to do that. They weren't allowed to let Dot, who, they, who doesn't even, this creature, they won't even let have defined boobs. She has a mono boob kiss her younger brother that's totally not okay but yeah you got any more of that sweet sweet dog torture anywho this episode's friggin hilarious man another fun part is megabyte keeps nosing in trying to figure out what's everybody gathering for what's going on you guys which is kind of funny to see a supervillain just want to be part of a party which he does eventually crash with his army so you think oh shit there's gonna be some kind of fight or something but this is the most selfish plan of all time it's hilarious it's just like a total masturbatory selfish plan he just wants to play the guitar in front of everybody and show how cool his guitar skills are. Him and Bob have a guitar off, and the entire thing is just fantastic. And then he gives the birthday boy the guitar. It was like the most Canadian supervillain thing you could possibly do. I friggin' love every part of this. Like, this is, this is just gold. Gold tier episode. I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> Alright, our next episode is a two-parter, finishing season one. And this episode feels a little bit weird. It's more serious, but it doesn't quite fit with the continuity of the universe. It starts off with Dot and Bob having a meeting with all the townspeople who are stuck in Megabyte's control there. They're trying to co convince them to surrender their icons so they can be freed and, you know, get the sector away from Megabyte. So Dot basically has all their personal identifiable information on this little notepad thing. And of course she loses it and ruins everybody's lives, so she's sad at the end. As the game is coming down, Bob finds himself in the Fun House, which is the most dangerous game ever, even though it's never mentioned before. And he has to figure out how to get through it with a very depressed Dot. End of part one. All right, so Bob drags Dot sorry ass through the game while she's feeling bad for herself, but at the same time, Megabyte still hasn't cracked the files. He's still working on that, so. Bob becomes a marionette and fucks off, leaving her completely alone until somehow Fog, I Fog, until somehow Fog infiltrates the game. This is start, this gets really confusing at this point. So yeah, I forgot to mention that Dot's been having these weird visions of the future, and there's some really wacky things in these visions that she ends up teleporting to. She finds herself in a future where she did lose the game and let everybody down, and Megabyte took over everything. But it plays out differently in this reality than what actually happens later. We get to see an adult Enzo, and he looks completely messed up and wrong to how he'll actually look as future Enzo later as well. We catch up with Fong, who's living in a box with Bob, who's also been nullified. He's been turned into one of those worms when you lose the game. And then ultimately, another thing is everybody has barcodes on them. And then one of these barcode per machines catches her and puts a barcode on her head. I remember when I was a kid, my mom walked in on the scene and was like, what is this Mark of the Beast crazy show you're watching? Because remember, they didn't have CGI or anything like this on the TV back in the day. So I had to convince her that it wasn't satanic. 
So the vision ends when the barcode's on her head and she finds herself back in the game and suddenly she has confidence again. She wins the game and then she remembers that she actually did encrypt her files so she was able to take the files back. And the season ends with a very high happy note that they got a sector back from the virus and they built a new little community park and everything's happy days for the end of season one. It was pretty cool to revisit the first season but I'm much more excited for what's to come because season two is 50 times better than season one. And season three is 50 times better than season two which means season three is like 25 500 times better than season one. There's so many cool things that happen that, uh, yeah, we gotta keep going, guys. Okay, season two is off to a great start because the user is sending a new file to mainframe. Pretty cool, they're gonna get gifts. I wonder what kind of gifts they're gonna get. Maybe it's presents for all of us. So they open the package, and of course, it's Megabyte. He, he pretended to be a file upgrade, and now he's inside the principal office. Bob tries to stop him, but he forgot to charge his glitch last night, so they all have to run away. Fong gets fucked over and has his memories and activation codes stolen. And with Megabyte safe behind the principal office shield, nobody can really do anything to help. Everybody's just like, what's going on? And what's going on is Megabyte's going to erase the entire city and rebuild it in his image. So everybody starts freaking out and going, what the hell are we going to do? And then Hexadecimal calls Megabyte, even though... All other communications are impossible until the armor's down. This is the first time we've seen Hexadecimal since Season 1, Episode 4. Just to remember that she still exists, and we don't see her again really until, I think, the fifth episode of this season. So Dot decides to take charge and get this cool robot suit thing to fight him. But Megabyte's so strong, he overpowers and takes over her suit. Bob comes back, but gets snatched, and then almost gets his head crushed until he agrees to help Megabyte get to the supercomputer. So Megabyte goes in this portal room, but ah, tricked you, it's actually a kill virus room. This is actually pretty interesting, because Bob was genuinely going to kill Megabyte here, which would have been a good thing in the long run, but Bob's later more like a pacifist who never wants to hurt viruses. So it's kind of weird to see that this almost happened until Megabyte shows that he has a bomb button in his arm so he has to get discharged, and then we get a real file. I wonder what it's gonna be. Alright, this next episode to me is kind of pointless, but here we go anyway. Some freaky green alien looking dude shows up and got fong by the ball, and he's just so weird, and everybody has to figure out what to do with this guy, and he's looking for Talon. I guess he's a code master, whatever that is, whoever Talon is. So Bob tries to stop him, but he gets this code goo on his arm, and it's like, crap, how are we gonna stop this guy? This extreme menace comes out of nowhere, so it gets so desperate they actually call Megabyte for help, and Megabyte's like, please, don't ask for any personal favors. Codemasters and viruses have a rather, uh, how shall I put this? Unpleasant history. Good luck. You'll need it. What the hell does that mean? I want to hear more about that story. This whole Codemaster premise is so out of left field. Not only does Codemasters never appear again in the show, I don't think they're even mentioned, so this episode ultimately is just such a strange, pointless endeavor. Bob decides the only way to get rid of this guy is to intentionally get him alone in a game and then lose on purpose. But before he can pull off the suicide homicide, he finds out that Enzo's also in the game, so he has to win anyway. So then this other Codemaster Talon shows up, and it's actually Old Man Pearson, who's established as the binome who runs the dump. And it's so random trying to see this binome act the same as this tall, lanky, stretchy arm alien guy. And he turns the sky weird colors for some reason, and he's about to do it. He's about to kill this binome pretending to be a Codemaster, but Bob and everybody else step in front of it, and they're like, if you kill him, you have to kill all of us. And the Codemaster guy's like, you know what, this is becoming a lot of work. I'm just gonna go away, and none of this is ever gonna matter. So, pointless, pointless episode. Alright, now we're getting into the good episodes. Pretty much every episode from here on in is amazing. We start off in a game, and our lead characters look really messed up, but suddenly things start to go really slow motion, to the point that Enzo even is able to beat the user. Actually won a game! Yeah, but why? That was kind of rude, but whatever. It turns out that things are going slow because Megabyte's stealing game energy to break into the archives, but didn't quite get there yet. Bob figures it out pretty fast because who else would do heinous shit like this? And as he goes to confront him, yep, you got it. Another game happens. Bob gets to play army time, and then once again, the energy from the game is getting sucked off, and things are going slow. Things get to the point that the game's actually about to crash, so the user decides, hey, why don't I play a different game entirely at the same time? How many games does this friggin' user have? Like, can you imagine if Mainframe happened on my own computer and how annoyed they'd be? What? Doom 2? Again? There's other fucking games, asshole. So now this army game merged with this prehistoric game and you got pterodactyl planes and 
technological T-Rexes. And something really interesting occurs because Megabyte gets stuck in the game too. They have to actually kind of work together for like three seconds before Megabyte decides to try to kill Bob with a tree stump thing off a cliff. Bob gets saved by some buddies and survives the murder attempt and, and then Megabyte gets fucked over and starts to get blasted in a tire. And Megabyte actually calls out to Bob for help. Guardian! I need your help. Now remember, just two episodes ago, Bob tried to full-on kill Megabyte, but in this episode... Looks like Megabyte's in trouble! We'd better check it out! Check it out, sir! This is madness! Utter madness! You can't possibly want to save a virus! I'm afraid so! It should really be remembered this moment when Bob saves Megabyte because it has some serious repercussions later. Anywho, Bob ends the game and discovers that yes, Megabyte did steal a gateway command to the supercomputer and also stole Enzo to boot. We have a flashback to Season 1 where this time Enzo's hooked to the gun belt shooter thing and shoots him through the thing and Bob follows. And then Hack and Slash save the day by ripping the gateway command thing in half and then they bust out of the portal and... Megabyte's like, you know what, I'm gonna murder all you guys right now. And Bob's like, uh-uh-uh, you owe me one, buddy. And he's like, fuck. Now we are even, Guardian. Now we are even. Hey, what's that down there? Alright, here we go. We're panning in on Mainframe on what I think is one of the best episodes yet. And this is when the show really gets amazing. Like, this episode... I'm so excited to talk about it right now. So remember in the last episode when Bob saved Megabyte from the tower? Well, in this very next episode, he launches a full-on war against the principal office. We have all sorts of amazing scenes where they're scrambling to get together, and it's just total chaos and pandemonium. And the worst part about this is it's all Bob's fault, because Bob saved Megabyte in the last episode. Where is that asshole anyway? Oh, there he is, playing with his car and hanging out with a random prostitute. Dot's just like wondering what kind of disease she's gonna get. And then Bob finally gets off his ass and goes to find out what's going on. Well, Megabyte's stealing the core energy from Mainframe with this big core energy stealing tube. Bob shows up just in time to fuck this guy's fingers up. <laughs> My digits! And Megabyte's all business this episode. He's got his legs on. He's actually not sitting down in a chair. And then all of a sudden, yep, you got it. You know what's going to happen at the most worst time every time. The user drops a game while well, his computer's running like shit because Megabyte fucked over the energy. This game is all fucked up and Noodley and Bob is looking on like realizing, oh crap, this is all my fault, isn't it? Nothing can save you now, Guardian. Enzo shows up on his crazy flying go-kart thing and knocks Megabyte into the pool of hot, hot mainframe energy. That's gonna be a hot, painful bath he's in. He probably misses the tire, doesn't he? And we now have a really, really fucked up game. Hey, let me just let the characters explain what's going on here. Fuck! What's going on? The game reality's been compromised! Megabyte has succeeded in stealing the core energy, which is now trapped in the game with us. Oh, great! That means if the user wins, we're doomed! And if I win, we're doomed. Mainframe's energy will leave with the game. So yeah, this game can't end. They can't beat the game. They can't lose the game. Well, they can't lose the game anyway, but they can't let the game end for any reason. Even if the user has to stop and take a shit, they're all gonna die, so... The stakes have never been higher. We're playing a pretty appropriate post-apocalyptic Mad Max type game. Enzo tangles with the user for a second, but then catches up to the truck that's carrying the core energy and then when they get a closer look oh my goodness it's megabyte megabytes a truck somehow this is pretty awesome for a lot of reasons so this all started because one of the artists on the show submitted a picture of a, a megabyte as a truck none of the writers or the show people asked for it it was just one of the you know computer artists were like hey here's a here's a megabyte truck you know i'm a man cheetah you want to do something with this <laughs> And um, I'm just amazed at the creativity because this episode was completely spawned off of this truck. This was not in the plans. And, and just just the creative juices that came from this truck, it led to this amazing episode. It even involved to people from this episode being involved in the actual Mad Max Fury Road, whatever new Mad Max movie there, which is pretty interesting to me. So yeah, I never actually saw the movie, but that's what I heard anyway. So yeah, back to Reboot. Bob gets inside Mega Truck and then drives the truck through another truck and has to figure out how to get that core juice back to the office in time. 
such an epic episode because so many things are against them, but Bob eventually figures out how to crush the user with the truck and get the thing back to the thing just in time to get the game back to being erect again, and then it zips off and everything's fine. Nice try, Megabyte. Better luck next time. Ooh, you really shouldn't have said that. This is the last time you will destroy my work, Guardian. Fact. That's actually a true statement, you guys. Alright, finally we get a hexadecimal episode, and it's probably the best hexadecimal episode. Bob is hanging out with his prostitute friend again, and then they notice that something really weird is going on. There's paint stuff happening in the sky, and the whole city's under paint attack because Hexadecimal stole the paint program. She blew the archives wide open. Megabyte gets fucked over in a big way. Ah. Ah. Megabyte gets stuck in the sky, and then Fong gets stuck in the sky, and Glitch melts. Frisket turns into a tiny Frisket. All sorts of wacky, perfect hexadecimal level pandemonium going on here. It's fantastic, like it's the perfect hexadecimal chaotic insanity episode. Enzo gets trapped and becomes a bunch of vid windows as they try to shut down the link to the program while Bob tries to stop her. Bob ends up cutting her face off, but he can't fix it because Dot already broke the link. Guardian. 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 Guardian, you have removed the only thing that keeps her power in check. Without the mass, hexadecimal will overload and be destroyed. Found you, So Bob has to scramble and get Glitch and put her face back on, but that totally messes her up. So she needs somebody to basically look after her at this point because she's really messed up badly. So Bob does kind of a dick move here. He sends Mike to go and babysit her for a while. And this seems like a really nasty move to do to both these people. I mean, we know that Bob doesn't like Mike, but leaving Mike in the situation with Hexadecimal, it's just a fuck you move to both of them because Mike is going to know the shit out of Hex and Hex could potentially kill Mike. So uh, yeah, we're going to let that scene sit there for a minute. But this actually stays in play. This actually is sort of the start of a multi-part thing. Because up until now, the only thing that changed in the show was Enzo's shirt, but now more things are about to change, especially in this next episode. So if you're actually interested in watching this, you know, I should have said this sooner, but spoiler alert, especially moving forward, because this is going to change from an episode-by-episode episode show to a full-on serialized, you-have-to-watch-it-in-order kind of show. So this is when the show actually really starts to pick up here. So in this next episode, Enzo's pretty depressed because he's got no kids to play with because apparently Enzo's dad blew up all the kids in the Twin City. And they actually talk about some plot threads that don't get revealed until like season four. So it's pretty impressive. At this point, they have everything really fleshed out and written out good. The whole episode is basically them inside of a game in the water where they're trying to fight an evil shark and there's fish type events going on. Enzo makes friends with a game sprite, somebody who exists entirely as somebody who can only be inside of a game. She can't actually leave the game, but she does find a way to make a copy of herself and stick it on Enzo. But the original Andrea says a pretty sad goodbye because she actually goes back to the game, but does send a copy out to live with Enzo as a separate entity. It's interesting to think that the creators didn't want annoying kids in the show, and they just introduced this annoying fish girl who's now part of the show forever, so... So yeah, fish girl, new character, guys. There it is. I downloaded a backup of myself onto your icon. The game let me out thinking I was you. Alright, we're back with Mike babysitting Hexadecimal. She's feeling a lot better and crazier these days. She talks about how she can use her mirror to get to the supercomputer and laughs about how, like, she can do it but Megabyte can't. Anywho, this is the moment where Mike ruins the entire universe and destroys everything by making this really annoying loud noise. What's wrong? Do you not hear it? The noise is so loud that Hexadecimal's pet Scuzzy's head explodes and then her mirror explodes and then this freaky alien tentacle web creature.
creature thing comes out and grabs her and puts this black gunk on her that turns her into like a venom type creature. This just in, media sprite and verminous familiar. I'm nothing personal. Threatened by strangely altered virus. News at in this final report. And then all these gnolls just kind of swarm her and turn her into a gnoll monster. So yeah, there's a giant gnoll monster running around destroying town. Like, what could they even possibly do against this thing? Do not worry. I have prepared something for just such an emergency. You're prepared for a giant monster made entirely of gnolls stomping around mainframe? That is correct. So the rest of the show is kind of like a Power Rangers parody, which is pretty funny. They put on silly costumes and they have this robot that they can't figure out how to use or form another robot. They fight the thing in front of the whole city and it's great. They blend all the nulls off a of hexadecimal. Will it blend? That is the question. So she's just kind of lying there and like she just got out of a bad hangover and they're trying to figure out what was that weird symbiote goo that got you and where's it gonna go next? And also, what the hell's wrong with Bob's knee right there? Hexadecimal is still writhing around on the street and Bob's like, listen, we gotta get you back to the mental institution. You can't be out during the day. You're gonna freak people out, man. Don't worry, I'll get Mike to torture you some more. Suddenly Mega Black shows up and gets a little grabby with Hexadecimal. Bob tries to get her out of there and she reveals, well, actually we're, we're brother and sister, so we could potentially merge and become a super virus. And Bob's like, I'm not gonna let that happen. And then that happens. This is a pretty fascinating moment because up until now, we've never got to see a new virus, but introducing Gigabyte. Gigabyte's as strong as Megabyte with his strength, but also has Hexadecimal's powers, almost. She's still pretty worn out from all the stuff that happened though. Ooh, Bob takes some serious back damage. They find out that he can absorb energy, so they have to shut down the city, and they get cornered in an alleyway. Gigabyte's like, give me your glitch so I can drink it. And Bob's like, yeah, well, I'm gonna shoot that away. And then, haha, you can't get it now. Even though he could have turned that into a propeller or something to fly out of there, he just zips it away. And then Mouse cuts his arm off and they run away from it. I am Astar, a robot from Planet Danger. I can put my arm back on. You can't. They go to hide in the principal office, but Fong's like, I'm not lowering the shield. That crazy mouse you know she barbecues kids and mouse is like oh, i hacked it anyway i'm in there well gigabyte's coming anyway you can't stop him he comes over and he tries to drink the shield so they have to turn it off we get some more dog torture yay Fresh kid. bob shows up and drops a tear on his ass and they split him in three and they're like what was that third thing what was that creepy symbiote spider dealy and mouse is like i'm up to some shit you guys but i still think there's something rotten at the heart of mainframe all right, things are extra sketchy in mainframe now. People start disappearing, including Dot. It gets so serious, they have to get the X-Files involved. They almost get Mike too, but damn it, he escapes because the web creature thing is allergic to light or something. Things get pretty horror show-like. It gets very sketchy. Nobody trusts each other, but Mouse tracks the creature down to the basement where it has a lot of the citizens stuck in these sacks, drinking them up. Mouse gets them free, but sees the web creature finally come out from a vent, and it's friggin' terrifying, man. Kill that thing with fire. Bob shows up too, and they gotta figure out what to do with this thing. Everybody has flashlights on it, trying to keep it contained. So Bob did call for help earlier because of Gigabyte, and Mouse was who the Guardian sent. But the Guardians are so freaked out by this thing, they just decide to blow up mainframe. The Guardians give Mouse a wrist bomb, and Bob has to get rid of it post-haste. Run, Bob, run! And then we get a really fascinating scene that I love. We get one last shot of the town and one last sense of normalcy because literally after this moment nothing will ever be the same oh boy kaboom oh shit is bob dead because honestly if bob's dead i don't i don't think i could handle it i can't bob bob where are you bob 
Oh, thank goodness, he's fine. But there's a big-ass tear in the sky, and that light shines down to the web creature who's suddenly not afraid of light anymore. <laughs> web creature has escaped! No! It's a Class M! It can use the tear energy to form a portal to the web! And boom! He turns it into a portal to the web. The web is now... Up there, out there, in there, gonna get him. It just broke free. We couldn't stop it. You see, Nolly, the web is out there. No, Modem. It's here. This is it, Fong. Prepare for war. All right, this episode, oh my goodness. Probably the most significant episode in the series. They gotta figure out how to shut this portal before the creepy crawlies come out and get everybody. So the entire town is banding together. All the mainframe police cars are getting ready. They're even working with Megabyte, but Fong doesn't want to give Megabyte the codes to the nuclear weapon, and Bob's like, just give him the nuclear weapon codes. It'll be fine, I'm an idiot. Things are so serious, Bob even makes Enzo a guardian or a temporary guardian in training which is actually good for Enzo because he's been at, he's been lying to his girlfriend Andrea the whole time because he has no appeal whatsoever but now he can legit say that he's kind of a guardian Bob we're at the tour Megabyte Mouse Hexadecimal and I are ready to go I can't believe I just said that and here come the creepy web creature things, but this is just the friendly first time visit guys. All everybody has to do is keep their cool and not shoot any of them or freak out, but this one guy craps his pants and pulls the trigger. They get away and warn the bigger attack drones to come get them, and now the whole city's under major attack by extra big fat attack drone things, and it's complete and total chaos. <laughs> everything in the air supporting the CPUs. And supporting the CPUs? Uh, yes, sir. Man, this episode's so good, I could just play it, but I better say some more stuff. <laughs> so yeah, you know things are messed up when everybody's working together, including the viruses. Hexadecimal's powering the weapon. Mouse is trying to hack the code, so once they shut the proto, nobody can ever make it into mainframe again. Listen, sugar. I'm not just getting the codes to shut the portal. I'm hacking into the web and erasing mainframe's location. So it will be difficult to locate mainframe from the web again? Impossible. <laughs> Clever girl. They better shut that portal fast, they just blew up Dot's diner. And then right in the nick of time, they, they do it. They blast the portal, they shut it, and everything's fine. They save mainframe, everybody hangs out and has a good time, and ah. They, what a what a tra tragedy averted, everybody. Everything is, everything is swell, top notch. Good job, everyone. Clippy, Clippy, Clippy. You have to tell the story right. It's the only way you're going to recover. Okay, everyone, get ready. We're going to shut the portal. Not just yet, Guardian. Blitz! Mm -hmm. 
Invested in me, I give you a field commission as guardian. First level. No! <laughs> well, this whole story took a turn, didn't it? We went from this. You want some used food? No, but thanks anyway. Bob! To this. As we speak, your CPUs are being shot out of the sky. Fong, drop all defenses on the principal office, and welcome to Mega Frame. This kitty-friendly show went from episodes that ended without consequences to so many consequences happen. This episode probably has the most things happen in it than any other episode, and I think it might be the most important one. You can call me silly if you want to, but this feels like an Infinity Wars ending level event of storytelling. Did we just lose? The viruses took over, and this is the actual ending we get. Remember what Bob said. I am Guardian Matrix, charged with defending this system. Two viruses take over my home? I don't think so! And when you're waiting to find out what happens next, guess what? ABC canceled the friggin' show when Disney took over. Friggin' Disney. I say! It's the ABCs! They've Stand on us, treacherous dogs! Sometimes I would look up at the stars and wonder if Bob's out there and what's going on. See, this episode came out at the start of February 1996. Canadian audiences would have to wait a year and a half until the summer of 1997 to find out what happened. American audiences would have to wait until 1999, so this was quite the friggin' premise to dangle over everybody. What a holy frig, man. Bob. I come from the net. Infecting systems, people, and cities to this place. Megaframe. 
my domain. No fucking way. New episode? Finally! We're gonna find out what happened to Bob. We get a brand new opening, this time Megabytes leading us into the intro. This perfectly sets the tone for what's going on and it's also a nice way to do a on the last episode kind of recap by shoving it in the opening in a nice way. So remember, this show started off as a fun time little computer experiment to see if they can make a CGI show. Pretty kid friendly stuff, just fun times, what's happening inside a computer to a much more serious, well written, epic kind of show with so many things to tell here. My format, virus, to corrupt and conquer. So yeah, thanks Megabyte for filling in since Bob is um, incapacitated at the moment. We can never forget Bob's old traditional opening. They say the user lives outside the net and inputs games for pleasure. No one knows for sure, but I intend to find out. Reboot! Poor bastard, he never did figure out what's going on with that user business, did he? He's trapped in some wire somewhere, guys. Tragic shit. Did you hear that? It sounds like somebody's in the wire screaming for help. Damn it, Murphy, no, you can't come to work high. All right, this episode picks up without skipping a beat, despite the audience waiting a year and a half. They're still stuck in this horrible moment where Megabyte's taken over. We notice a dramatic increase in quality of animation. They're pointing the nuke at the principal office. Dot looks great. She has actual boobs now. She's got eyelashes. She's really taking care of herself and looking great, despite the fact that there's a war. She should look terrible, like, at the exact ending of season two, but, well, you know, there's been a hiatus and there's been some retooling here, so I'll forgive them, but it's just kind of funny. It's like everybody's suffering and Dot's like, let me look pretty. Specky's here, too. You remember Specky. He's always been around, but... He's got some bad news for us. Sir, what's left of the CPU attack force is requesting landing clearance. There's only nine ships. The rest didn't make it. Nine? That's all? So yeah, you gotta hand it to Megabyte. He had this shit planned out in the last episode, having all the CPUs get destroyed by the web creature things. They try to get their nine ships home, so they lower the shields, but one of the enemy ships fucking crashes into it and they don't have shields anymore. And Megabyte's like, hey, we won. Check it out, sis. And Hexadecimal's like, I'm gonna just commit suicide on a grand scale here. Megabyte's like, can you not be crazy just for like five seconds and not kill us all? And then she gives him a zap. And then for the first time since the Andrea episode, believe it or not, the user actually decides, hey, maybe I'll play a game. The game comes down right where Hexadecimal's powering the weapon and she gets absolutely obliterated. So unlike every other instance of a game happening at the worst, most inopportune time, this is like the most helpful game that ever happened. Have it your way. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> Whoa, now that's what I call a bug zapper. I can't believe it! We've been saved by a GameCube! So yeah, because Enzo's a guardian in training wheels, he rushes to the game, but they stop Andrea because she's still a game sprite and they don't know what's gonna happen if she tries to enter some other game. Dot and Enzo do make it in though, and it's Evil Dead. Well, this is a big surprise and a definite change of uh, feeling for the show. Movie. The show's no longer for younger kids, it's for older, younger kids. It almost feels like a different experience altogether, but we still got the same old dog torture. Brisket! No! Enzo finds out that glitch is completely broken, so he's even more useless than he thought. And all sorts of crazy stuff happen, but they they do it. They they beat the game. These flesh-colored binome paramedics freak me out. Surprisingly, Megabyte doesn't attack them when they exit the game, because he's too busy trying to resurrect his sister's corpse. Ah, Looks like he cares about her after all. Right? 
Andrea and I have a little surprise for you. I don't think I can take another surprise. We found him at the diner. Oh shit, it must be Bob. They found Bob! Oh my gosh, everything's gonna be okay because Bob's back. Cecil! I thought we lost you. Cecil? Cecil, are you shitting me? Nobody gives a shit about Cecil. What the fuck off, Cecil? No fuck. Alright, it's time to learn about propaganda. Propaganda. <laughs> Used correctly, it can be as devastating as any weapon in my arsenal. It's pretty interesting how the show keeps veering further and further away from being a kid show. Like, they're talking about propaganda now, which is not a recess conversation starter. So this show isn't just for kids. Like, anybody can watch it and get appreciation out of it. It's not weird that I'm making this video. Oh, I tried to reach the game in time. I really did. We both did. But Megabyte's troops blocked us at every turn. They wouldn't let us in. You they... know, Megabyte has done this once before. To Bob himself. Megabyte, sir! All troops are positioned and ready for the next game. The Guardian shall not pass. Excellent. But remember, do not harm the boy. Just stop him. He's far more useful to me alive, for the moment. Make sure his humiliation is total. I want the masses to wallow in his ineffectiveness. Yeah, Megabyte, I know that you're trying to sound menacing and all, but you're trying to thwart an annoying little kid here, so, you know, maybe not be too proud of that. So yeah, just like the very first episode when Megabyte was stopping Bob from getting in the game so he could get something out of him. Only Bob's such a pushover, he actually gave into it. Enzo's actually smarter. He found a way to get out of it. Yeah, it's cardboard cutout clone time. What the? Sir, the whole sky is filled with Duck and Enzo's. This time Andrea stops Mouse from getting in the game. And this actually prevents us ever seeing Mouse in a game ever. See Mouse was doing some kind of icon surgery earlier to see if they can reboot in there, but Andrea didn't want them both to take the risk. Now they're in some kind of Bugs Bunny type cartoon with this really annoying raccoon situation. Enzo reboots into Elmer Fudd. The townspeople are having a hard time working with this annoying kid, but they eventually band together when they realize their lives are on the line. This time Megabyte has his sister in a bubble and she's all better now with a new costume. She's like, hey, thanks for fixing me. I gotta go now. And then he zaps her and he's like, oh, I got a dog collar on you. You have to do what I say or I'll zap you some more. Yeah, their relationship just keeps getting more and more fucked. Enzo's about to win the game, but he's like, Andrea, what if your icon doesn't work and you get stuck or whatever? And she's like, let's just roll the dice on that one. But yeah, everything's fine. They win the game. The townspeople are happy, but Megabyte's troops show up again to get them. But they're rescued by the same cardboard trick that... Actually, it was Dot who came up with these cardboard tricks. I just didn't want to give her credit, but it's a pretty lame trick. It only works because Megabyte's men are so incompetent. All right, we have a wonderful James Bond firewall theme opening. Very sexy, very cool. We find ourselves inside a Santa Claus themed game. It's pretty fun. Enzo and Andrea are snowmen that have to beat Santa Claus and blow him up before Christmas. Seems like our heroes have things unlocked. They just want another game. They're having a good time. They're laughing. Good times had by all. Until Megabyte shows up and starts strangling Enzo. Oh my gosh, look at him with an arm tremble. Megabyte doesn't really hurt Enzo here, but reminds him that he has the upper hand and he's in control. Propaganda stuff, intimidation stuff. Enzo goes back to the principal office and cries and everybody's just like, why did Bob leave this guy in charge? Was he pranking us or what? Dot's thinking, geez, I wish I was made into a guardian. Like Enzo, you okay? Did he hurt you? And Enzo's like, no, he just said a lot of words I didn't care for. I think I'm gonna quit now. And they're just like, fuck. So then the team comes up with this firewall idea to contain the virus and makes Enzo think it's his idea just to you know make him not feel useless but I think they're just enabling him at this point and then yet another game happens we're three episodes in a season three and there's already been five games which if you compare that to the end of season two the last four episodes didn't have any games at all so the user must be unemployed again and at Christmas time I hope all this extra game playing time doesn't make the user 
good and he actually wins a game, that'd be bad. Because of all the propaganda stuff, and despite the last episode, the tense people are like, oh, it's Enzo, fuck's sakes, we can't, no, we're not teaming up with this kid. And then Enzo gets his dog to threaten them, and he's like, listen, welcome to the Enzo era, we gotta do this, man, we gotta do it. This is the Enzo era, bitches, it's gonna be a long one, strap in, I can feel it, gonna be long era coming up, this is just beginning, you guys. So yeah, this is almost like a Toy Story kind of game, they're all tiny and they have to stop the user from leaving the window. So lots of fun little action stuff here, but let's see what's going on outside the game. Let's check on Megabyte. Ah, oh, dear sister, how are we feeling? Weak. Very weak. Help me, dear brother. But of course. I don't... I don't know why we even check on these guys anymore. Let's see what Mouse is up to. Okay, she's taking a nap in her jet and laying some eggs around Megabyte's perimeter there. Our heroes win the game, but Megabyte's right there and he's very proud of what he did to his sister here. You did that? To your own sister? Yes, yes, yes. It's rather good, isn't it? You're sick, Megabyte. But suddenly they got a surprise for Megabyte. It's the firewall comes up all around them. And Megabyte's trapped in his own little place there. It's a very interesting turn of events. Back! Everyone get back! <laughs> oh, isn't this rich? Aren't we a pair? Now it is the jailer who is jailed. <laughs> when you're ready, dear sister. Ready? Ready for what? You expect me to help you? Now, now. We can do this the easy way, or... I'm glad you find this amusing. Oh, I was just picturing what I will do to you once I am free of your little toy. You have no idea the power you try to control. Chaos will always triumph over order. It is the way of things. Enough! Breach this firewall with your viral energies or suffer. Your choice. Excellent. Lieutenant! All forces ready! Waiting your command, sir! The way is clear. Take every legion and mount an all-out attack on the principal office. There are no shields to stop you. Take no prisoners, show no mercy. The city will be mine. Go. Sir! Yes, sir! So wait a minute, Megabyte's attacking from the front? He's attacking from right here, directly facing the principal office? Even though they have guns that can shoot this way at them, so they're like attacking at the most direct way, like sitting ducks, they're gonna be shot down so fast. Why didn't he like, why didn't he break out from this way? I mean, yeah, Mainframe still has nine little ships floating around, but you've seen the size of Megabyte's army. Megabyte would have totally obliterated these guys and then came around opposite sides here he could have swarmed the whole the whole central part of the whole circle or part right here and then he could have you know i mean yeah the, the principal office has these cannons that can shoot out but if they have the perimeter they just shoot in and eventually you know take out all the cannons and then come out from the back instead of i don't know why he came out directly like you should fuck what what so yeah megabytes direct attack through a pinhole forcing all his abcs to go in single file 
they just get blasted to pieces and it's another victory for mainframe so things are looking great right now meanwhile inside firewall land they're wondering how long they can keep control of hexadecimal basically how we have kept her under control for so long is a mystery she could even be faking I think she likes being tied up. Let us not even think about that. Hack and Slash are about to kill this guy. This really annoying guy that keeps trying to redeem himself that nobody likes and I'm spending too much time talking about him already. But Hack has a change of heart and frees him. Go little fellow. Run. Be free. So these guys aren't really terrible. They're just dumb, you know? Megabyte's gonna be mad! Oh, what's new? I miss Bob. What? Bob always stopped us before we could do anything really bad. Well, nobody does. Hey! I never thought of it like that before. And then that guy that nobody likes meets up with Scuzzy on the other side of the firewall and somehow they switch places and Scuzzy gets into Hexadecimal's room there and uh, yeah, I guess, guess he gets her out of there somehow. Outside of the firewall, things are happy days. Everybody's all celebrating their victory. Enzo, his dog, and his girlfriend are all being escorted to the game like celebrities and things are just going great, you guys. So they're playing some kind of Mortal Kombat game this time. But because there's 12 characters to choose from, they have to be careful how to do this. Andre and Frisket boot into one of the windows there, and Enzo floats around trying to grab a spot so he gets selected. Enzo does find a way to end up getting selected and has to fight Satan. Pretty intimidating stuff, but Enzo's got this. We know he does. One all. This is the decider. Come on, Enzo. Keep it together. You could do this. You're a guardian. A machine. Let's do it. Reboot will return after these messages. Fast forward, Reboot's on! Warning, incoming game. Mainframe is mine. Look out, it's Megabyte. Sprite, we need your help. Totally cool. Hack, slash, backspace now. Scared Megabrick? Alpha numeric. Huh? Bob, use Glitch. Glitch, why? Thanks for the data. Get him! Way to go, Sprites! Yes! Reboot, micro playset. Each sold separately. We now return to Reboot. Enzo, no, no! <laughs> yeah, kid died. <laughs> oh, two kids, two kids, and a dog. Two kids and a dog died. Ha 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 ha. I mean, this has to be the darkest episode. I mean, geez, what an ending. I mean, everybody's dead. How do you follow this episode up with Dot hangs herself? Imagine being a kid going back to school the next day like, Hey, Billy, how you doing? Not good, man. This is not good. Everybody's dead. I have toys of dead action figures and oh my gosh. We're all gonna die, kid. We're all gonna die. I mean, what a... What a turn. What a story turn. And don't get me wrong, I appreciate it. I appreciate it that this show started off for young kids. At the time that I was a young kid, this show literally grew up with me, which makes it so fascinating. When the show was remarketed for kids 12 and older, I was 12 and older, and I was, you know... I'm just impressed that this show took all these chances, and from a creative writing standpoint, too, to, like, get rid of all your main characters and change things so dramatically. 
I actually think it's fascinating. And so many things, like this whole show changes so much from here on out. Check this out. Like the stakes have literally never been higher. Hey Billy, there's a new reboot episode. Yeah, who dies in it this time? Actually, no, wait, is Enzo Andrea and Friska still alive? But they're aliens? Are they in another dimension? No, wait, they're playing a game. Actually, this has all been spoiled from the opening credits of the new episode here. I live in the games. I search through systems, peoples, and cities for this place. Mainframe. My home. Yes, they survived living in the games, and they're all older now. Andrea went from creepy fish kid to super sexy lady. We have adult Enzo. Oops, wrong footage, it's this one. There we go. Man, playing games would make you beefy or eat like a lot of ravioli or something. I mean, nobody wants to admit to eat nine cans of ravioli, but I did. I'm ashamed of myself. Let's check in on Frisket. Oh my god, I can't believe that dog's not dead. Didn't you get him when you were like 10? Oh yeah, this dog is indestructible, dude. Yeah, looks like his eye is falling out. Oh, is it? Yeah. What, it just bulges? Yeah, it bulges out a little Yeah, what you there. do is you just pop it back in with your knuckle. No, Frisket's still the same. He looks the exact same, except he has arthritis now. So yeah, these guys survived after all thanks to Andrea and her game sprite technology. They just keep hopping from game to game hoping the user drops them back in their own game. system. But they find themselves in a pretty fucked up system where they have to help all these losers who can't play games figure out how to do that. Enzo's pretty gruff and serious but becomes joyful like a kid again when he discovers a virus! Go get him! Hey, this is actually pretty exciting because we haven't seen a, a new virus in a while. We've only seen three viruses on this show and each one has been very well thought out, well designed, very awesome and epic, so... So I'm excited to see what this new virus is gonna look like. Oh, it's fucking lame. It's just a purple praying mantis. Okay, whatever. Beefy Enzo goes by Matrix now, but finds another younger version of himself. Since we're only just introduced to adult Matrix, it seems really soon to give us a callback slash rememory of when he was younger, and this kid is really annoying. So yeah, there's not much to say. They help these townspeople figure out how to win a game and get them back on track. Truthfully, this is the first of three episodes that I don't really enjoy rewatching because nothing really happens. We're just, it's just basically to tell us that they're still alive and they're hopping from game to game, but ultimately this and the next two episodes are really mostly inconsequential, just like character stuff, I guess. So let's keep going. Catch. Half the new Merrick. Thanks. Did that kid remind you of anybody? Not particularly. Didn't think so. Andrea's log. Game date unknown. We've entered a new system with the hope of finding mainframe. Once again, we're met with failure. With each passing system, Matrix grows more despondent. Alright, this next episode is just plain weird, and it doesn't even feel like a proper reboot episode. I can't explain it, it just feels so unlike anything we've ever seen in a reboot episode. They find themselves in a really weird Star Trek server universe this time, with sentient tears and all sorts of really weird, weird characters. There's even a doppelganger Bob. I mean, the last episode had a doppelganger Enzo, but here's doppelganger Bob with a lightsaber. What are you doing, mister? Also, one of these tears is a virus, and one of these guys is a virus. Right. These new viruses have been very disappointing, you guys. And then fake Bob dies and nobody cares. System out of danger. Yeah, don't get me wrong, I love when Reboot does parodies, but this feels like too much of a thing to be a whole episode. I feel like they just wanted Fat Enzo and Andrea to go game hopping and give them some episodes, but it's so disjointed and disconnected from the rest of the show, which I guess that's the situation they're in anyway. They are this, this disconnected, but they get to some weird places and the next episode gets even weirder, you guys. Alright, another inconsequential episode to the main story. Even Enzo's getting sick of this. I've had enough of this. This time they went into a game and... Oh my gosh, mainframe inside a game? We even get to see classic Bob and Dot and Hack and Slash and it feels like we're back in the good old days. Not knowing what to do, they decide to reboot and look at this, they've turned into viruses. It's pretty fun actually seeing Andrea get way too into character. Happy, sad, happy, sad, happy, sad. Intrigued, I've never been so in touch with my emotions. Spoken like a true virus! Andrea, you're taking your role a little too seriously. I'm just playing, like not Megabyte. That's Matrix. This insanity stops now! 
and Enzo hates every moment of this, but for some reason he has to find somebody called number one. Things just get beyond weird. It turns out everybody's number one. I am number one. I am the driving force in your life. I am hatred. I am number one. I care for no one. I am number one. The original. Do you think this is a game? Do you? This is like some kind of psychological look inside Matrix's mind. All set to a parody of The Prisoner, which is a show from the 60s that nobody watched. So it's a really weird parody to make an episode on. Basically, this whole episode's pointless because it's just a nightmare inside Matrix's head. Like a real, real horrible, horrible nightmare. Poor bastard got hit in the head with a golf ball and had a snooze. That's the episode. I'm tired of these stupid games. We've been living like viruses, infecting games and systems. This has to end. We're taking control. The search for mainframe and Bob begins now. Finally, see? I told you these three episodes are wasting everybody's time. All right, this is the episode with no name, but it's also the episode with the most plot, because after not much happened in the last three episodes, so many things happen in this one. All right, so they exit the game and end up in some kind of Middle Eastern looking, really foreign city, which make me, makes me wonder, like, how big is this net? And after being in the city for like two seconds, this alcoholic shows up and robs Matrix of his key tool. Matrix gets into a hot, ragey pursuit to get it back while Andrea is like, Shall we do some shopping? Matrix follows him to a sketchy bar and tells him to give it back before he, you know, kills everyone. And the thief is like, oh yeah, well I have these obese guys on my side, what do you got? Enzo's like, I got this obese gun. So yeah, he gets them all out of there and gets his tool back, and right when he takes a victorious drink of eggnog, Turbo shows up. Remember Turbo? He tried to nuke Mainframe that time and set all these horrible, horrible events in motion. So Turbo ties up Enzo, and then when he realizes, oh wait, you're that poor kid I tried to murder that time. Yeah, sorry, I'll let you go. Let's have a chat, buddy. They talk about a lot of important things. They talk about how Enzo, when he's sitting on a game, in a game in transit or something, I guess they age faster in the game, but not in real life, so... Not as much time went by as he thinks, so there's still lots of time to save Bob and, you know, go back to mainframe. Plot gets so plotty right now, it's not even funny. Turbo also lets them know that the Guardians are assholes now, worse than before. They're actually under control of a new virus. So, wow. Look at this. You were gonna warn me about something? This. It's the infection, but I'm strong. I can still fight it. No, much worse. A super virus. Damon. She's infected the entire Guardian Collective. Except for you and Bob. But I'm only a cadet, version one. Yeah, but you're clean. This is so exciting. After the story spinning its gears, it just blew right up. We now have a brand new super virus threat taking over the Guardians. Which this kind of minimalizes Megabyte, but, you know, interesting. Something's happening. Lots of stuff happening. I forgot to mention this alcoholic thief guy was actually working for the Guardians. They told him to steal the key tool that he got back, so makes the Guardians look kind of pathetic that they need this guy on their team. Terrible and Matrix have some laughs and kill some Guardians. Andrea really kills this Guardian. Oh, she kills her so good. So then they reunite at that bar that Matrix just can't seem to leave. And look at this, it's Captain Capacitor, see? I told you. Told you that pirate episode way back when was worth it. Yay, Cap is back. And he's gone again. Matrix and Andrea chase him down again, and this time Andrea actually tags along and resists the urge to go shopping. Frisky catches up to the pirate, and the pirate ice cubes him. The pirate's like, wait, why does this look familiar? Glory be! I know those teeth! Sick em. Tsk! Tsk! Let your friends unguarded! Bad boy! Bad boy! 
Now they'll remember each other, Matrix tells Andrea, it's cool, these guys are friends now. Yeah, I mean, they tried to rob us when I was kids and kidnap Bob or sell him into slavery or something, but he's cool now, we're cool. So yeah, the Guardians are strict net travel and they have to find a way to leave, and the only way to do that is with the captain and his ship, but all his crew's in jail. So they have to bust them out, and Matrix sends his girlfriend to distract the guards to teach her a lesson about abandoning him for shopping. <clears throat> Excuse me, can you help me? I'm sorry, Bab. This is a restricted area. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. But my dog, he's missing. Have any of you seen him? Uh, well, uh, uh, not hi, exactly. Yeah. You've seen uh, not, him. Not uh, so many uh, words. Uh, <laughs> oh, here he is. Brisket, come here, boy. <laughs> So Matrix and the captain bust in the back door while that's going on to free the other pirates. The captain tries to claw at this control panel with his cute little hook thingy and Matrix uses his gun. While they're freeing the pirates, the surfer dude's like, can you free me too, buddy? Matrix is like, nah, fuck him. The captain's like, you're a real piece of shit. And like, I'm a pirate. And like, what are you doing? You're a piece of shit. Let him out, man. Just let him, give him a break. They make it back to the pirate ship and are getting ready to leave, but the sea police are getting ready to attack them as well. But wait, where's Andrea? Oh, she's about to get busted. And that surfer guy shows up and actually sets, helps her out. Gets her out of there. And he damn near charms the pants off her too. All he has to do is not have anger issues. Next time, it's your head. They all meet back at the pirate ship and Matrix is like, Fuck, this guy's abs are better than mine. Anywho, they all have an action-y escape scene. It's pretty awesome, epic. They get out of there, they leave the system, they make it out. Uh, until they don't. The ship's portal generator broke, so now they have to rely on Surfer Guy after all, and Matrix is extremely jealous, like super, super jealous times. Ray, will you help us get into the web? Are you pretty lady? Anything. First mate's law. Soon the saucy mare will enter into that profitless region known as the Edge of Beyond. If not for the help of the surprisingly large and grown-up Enzo Matrix, our ship's crew would be rotting in a prison cell awaiting deletion. We banded together to help Matrix find Bob, who's trapped in the web. Our new ally, a web surfer, has agreed to act as our guide. But I'm afraid trouble is brewing. Matrix doesn't appreciate the attention the surfer is giving his lady love, Andrea. As always, we would follow the captain anywhere, even into the web. By the code! Mr. Christopher! Yes, sir. It appears, my lad, that we've reached the edge of beyond. So they reached the edge of beyond. A creepy place full of dead web creatures which they put all over the ship to protect against the web. Otherwise they'll get turned into goo real fast. I get you, lad. Clap the ship in the scales of the dragon. There's a fun montage where they're doing that, covering the ship with dead web creature guys. <laughs> Meanwhile, Andrea is bored and is like, hey, I want to go shopping. Is this shopping? Andrea, not that! We got to stop her! Oh shit, creepy web creature baby bit her and now she's all see-through and shit. They have to go get the thing that bit her to fix her, but the thing gets in the other thing and Matrix did a gun tracking thing on it. So now their ship is all remodeled and looking cool and they can finally go in the web to find Bob, but also this web creature thing they need to fix Andrea. Now they're in the web. The creepy, creepy, freaky, acid tripping web. And the surfer's protected. He has this cool protection mode. 
But two seconds after being in the net, Matrix goes rogue trying to kill this baby web creature thing for Andrea. You steered into a data storm? I might have guessed. Only a hard-headed psychopath could be so stupid. I did it for Andrea. We need her energy back from that web creature. You could have gotten everyone deleted, including Andrea. I don't need this. Well, you are going to hear it. Cap cools everyone down, reminding him that he's in charge. Hey, Safa. There be only one captain on this ship, and I give the orders. But I will take your advice. And as for you, Enzo Matrix, it's only for the sake of your sweet sister Dot that I tolerate this behavior. I'll not warn ye again. So Ray tries to go get the creature, but some random guy shows up and wrecks his shit real good. Oh shit, all that's left is this bitten up surfboard. Matrix is surprised to see the crew made him a dead web creature coat to go out and try to fight that guy. But hey, wait, the surfboard repaired itself. This time Enzo tries to go capture the web baby, but more weird guys show up and Enzo loses the tracker and he almost dies. He almost falls into this abyss, but wait, the surfer's back. What's going on here? What are you? A search engine. Next generation. You are the surfboard. <laughs> You're smarter than you look. What happened, lad? The pod's moved off. There's nothing out there. You're wrong, Captain. There is something out there. I suggest you order battle stations. Things are at an all-time low in this episode, which is impressive when you think of all the stuff that happened. Now there's this sketchy gang after them. Andrea is super dying and Matrix is trying to give her some of his sprite blood. Here comes that gang again. They're really trying to get after them this time. Matrix is all woozy from giving blood, but uses his gun to scare them away, but also melts it a little bit. Doesn't matter, they all break in anyway and all hell breaks loose. This is it, guys. They lost. They're all dying. Super fucked. Oh fuck, this guy gets sucked right out of the ship. Ah, oh, so much despair right now. They lost the web creature that can fix Andrea and everybody's just getting murdered. All hands prepare to repel borders! This is all she wrote, folks. But wait, but wait, wait a minute. Is something happening? The ship just got fixed and that guy got rescued. Who's this guy? Why does he look familiar? Who's this bloke? Oh shit, this mysterious stranger of mystery took Glitch, he's a thief. It's Andrea. Please, somebody help her. I can give no more. By the code matrix, you can't be meaning to let that scurvy dog... Gavin! Gavin, he's here to help.
<sighs> oh, Bob. We found you. talking these things. Bob! Whoa! I think you're a little too big for that. No way Bob's back. Check it out. He's a hippie now. He's got these dreadlocks and he joined a gang, but I'm pretty sure that's Bob, right? That's Bob, yeah. He's back, you guys. What an adventure. All right, what better time to celebrate? Everyone gets drunk off their ass. I'm jealous. Crazy party dares? Want to eat this Wrigley thing? What the fuck? Meanwhile, Matrix is trying to figure out how to talk to Bob because it's been so long. How can he impress his idol? How about barging into the party and almost murdering a guy? Enzo, what do you think you're doing? Put that gun down. Now! Come on, mate. Don't worry, Bob. Crisis over. I didn't mean to. I just reacted. I couldn't stop myself. I'm, I'm sorry. Andrea does a sexy little head nod towards Bob to give him a clue that he needs to give a pep talk to this emotional man-child. And he picks up the message. Great speechless communication there. Bob. I'm, I'm so sorry. I wanted you to be proud of me. And I blew it. What have I done? What have I become? An asshole. Look, you survived the games and brought this crew together and rescued me. I am proud of you, Enzo. I've done... questionable things. You did what you had to do. We've all changed, all grown, and now it's time to fight back. Lost Guardian and a Renegade. Not a key tool between them. And a big job to do, but we'll be okay. The surfer can get us back to mainframe. We'll deal with Megabyte and then Damon. Together. Oh shit, yeah, they have to deal with Damon too, don't they? Fire in sight, Captain. We're approaching the web address of mainframe. Surfer, stand ready to open the portal! By the code? What was that? Oh no, an energy trap of some kind. Energy balls are shooting at them. They have to turn off the ship before it overloads and explodes. What's going on? It's getting worse out there. The charges are increasing in frequency and strength. We're like rats caught in a trap. Or mice. That's it. This is one of Mouse's traps. She's the only other sprite who knew Mainframe's address. She sealed and protected the location. Mouse? We might have stood a chance against the Guardians. But Mouse? Mouse trap! I guarantee it's the craziest trap you'll ever see! They try to ride the storm to mainframe, but burn themselves out, burn their sails off, and burn everything out. What are they gonna do now? Okay, Bob. What's the plan? Well, I, uh, uh, uh... Oh. Sorry, Bob. Now what? Pixels. They're eating through the ship. Captain, and they're all over us. They're covering the web shields. By the code, is there no end to this web madness? Now there's fucking pixels after them. What a crazy time, this web business. They all try to go and blast the pixels off, but then another trap happens, and the surfer and Bob's gang of thugs all get locked out. I'm sorry, mates. There's nothing I can do. Wherever you're going, you're on your own. Now a shrinking energy bubble was about to smush them right into the tear and really fuck them over. What are we going to do? Steady, lad. We've got through worse scrapes than this. No, we haven't. Bob finally realizes it's the web creatures that they put on the ship that's causing these traps to happen. He tries to explain that we gotta get rid of our shields. But Enzo thinks Bob just lost it at this point and needs to be put in a home. Bob, you're tired. I told you I got this covered. 
Look, you trusted me when you were younger. I'm asking you to trust me one more time. So they have a plan, but still, they can't make a portal without the surfer, and Glitch is broken. But Glitch is like, hey, don't worry, I got this. You want to merge? Bob actually merges with Broken Glitch to access his powers and become a full-on superhero, and can now finally open a door to mainframe. Awesome stuff. We are now one. Let's go home. I come from the net. I search through systems, peoples, and cities for this place. Mainframe. My home. My format? Guardian. To mend and defend. Reboot! We're home, our heroes come back out of the web and they're back. Oh fuck, stop putting credits over scenes I'm trying to show people. Wait a minute, oh no, they're not home at all, they're in Detroit. That must, something must have gone wrong, now they have to keep looking. Oh wait, no, sorry, this is mainframe. Megaframe, it's under new management. Matrix and Bob take a look around and Bob tries to mend a few tears, which is kind of pointless considering how fucked up the system is. They discover evidence of what happened and we get some sad flashbacks to how Hex escaped and blew up Megabyte's house. They do that thing where they have to show it like 50 times. Hex also caused even more destruction and blew up Hack and Slash. He's having a great time. Big trouble. Megaboy finds out that Bob and friends are back, so that must mean that mainframe is back online. Time to get the fuck out of here. But he needs the code from Fong, but this time he can't just do the thing where he just takes the information. He has to actually decrypt it. It's, it's decrypted this time. Matrix goes crazy and tries to do that thing where he just doesn't think and tries to take on a whole army by himself, so Bob has to save his ass. Bob's thinking, fuck, Enzo's older than me, but I'm still babysitting this fucking guy. Like, fuck. Hack and Slash appear and it looks like they switch teams. They're working for Dot. Then we got all kinds of wonderful reunions. Easy, Matrix. They were never that bad. Um, Slash, oh yes, buddy, Hack. does that not look a little bit like Bob? Like Bob? Why, yes, it does. <laughs> Bob! Oh, Bob! Bob! Oh, we have missed you so much, Bob! We do you have, have no idea! idea. Oh, yeah. oh, I like the new hair. Oh, it is this very is exciting. Great look for you. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Easy, boys. Bob, who is the big green fellow? That's Enzo. Oh, Enzo! It is a good thing he's on our side. You bet. Enzo! Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy, wait till she sees you. Oh, She's yeah. gonna have a connection. Come on, let's go see Dot. Dot? We have brought you a surprise. Yes, a very big surprise. Huge. <laughs> Hi sis, I'm on steroids now. Mouse is still horny as ever. This is pretty fucking awkward. We get a sad flashback to how Fong fixed hack and slash and stays behind while Megabyte breaks in.
All right, it's time to take mainframe back, and this time with Bob, they stand a chance. And he's gone. Bob? Bob. Hexadecimal. I've been so bored, but it will be so much more interesting now that you're here. <laughs> All right, we start off with a really rough look at the town and people are trying to survive. Damn, hard times. And now Megabyte's tear appears and he guards it with his troops there. It's his ticket out of there, you know. The pirate ship attacks the fleet and they begin to open fire, but the ship's empty. It's filled with explosives. Kabooms! Just like in that Game of Thrones thing. All of Megabyte's flying army of ABC machines are just gone, just like that. So now it's time to storm the gates. I should be out there with them, and so should Bob. But the attack had to go ahead. Bob, they need you. I need you. But Bob's busy hanging out with a crazy person. Oh, you always were the dancer. Biscuit. So now they've broken into Megabyte's principal office and Megabyte stares at this figure who looks like he ate previous Enzo. Megabyte actually talks him into a fist fight but gets punched so hard, damn. Time to bring out the Wolverine claws. Andrea helps too. I almost taken Matrix's head off. Damn, Megabyte's like, that bitch is crazy. Yay, Fong, I'm shopping. Megabyte gets some codes and it's time to kick Matrix down some stairs, but they still keep fighting. Megabyte kicks him across the principal office roof like 50 times. The fight gets pretty crazy. Gut punch, gut punch, gut punch, gut punch, gut punch, gut punch. But after that, the thing that really takes Megabyte down is having his claws broke. Somehow that's the straw that broke the camel's back. He can't, he's done after that. But for some reason, Enzo shows Megabyte mercy. Very Miyagi-Do. You can't do this. It goes against everything you stand for. You took away my life. Destroyed my home. Caused nothing but pain and suffering to everyone I held dear. Surprised? Don't be. You're not worth it. You can't possibly want to save a virus. Mainframe will always endure. Remember this defeat, this humiliation. Remember you can never win. No. You remember, boy. How I turned defeat into victory. How I left you with a dying system. Oh no, Megabyte's about to go to the supercomputer. Wait, is this something to even worry about? What's he gonna do, limp over with his broke-ass ankle and try to go to Damon and be like, hey, can I, can I sit there? I'm, I'm, I'm in charge now. Doesn't matter, cause Mouse fucks him over and switches the destination to the web. Another hentai tentacle monster comes out and pulls Megabyte inside and that's the end for him. Megabyte's done for keeps now because nobody survives the web, it just doesn't happen. Once you're out there, you never come back. You know, it should have been Bob to get back at Megabyte after all he's done, but it's probably for the best because Bob's too soft. He would've just tried to be friends with Megabyte again and invite him over to a movie night or something. We should actually go check on Bob, what's he up to? Hex, your mask, what happened? Please, let me touch it. I don't know if I can let you do that, Bob. It looks painful. Please, let me help. I'm afraid. Don't be. Oh, Bob. <laughs> oh. Mask. My face. Oh, look what you've done 
to me. How are you feeling? For the first time, whole. Hex, could you? For you, Bob. Anything. G'day, mates. Who was that guy? He seemed a bit miffed. Surfer! All right, Bob's back. Well, he missed all the action, but at least everything's fine now. So, what'd I miss? The system! It's shutting down! This is bad. Very bad. Maybe you picked the wrong time to play banjo and hang out at the wharf, eh? The city is dramatically self-destructing and we see so much chaos. Oh look, a fun Indiana Jones parody. Oh shit, that got real. The solution is clear. Jam everyone into the principal office like sardines. Meanwhile, Bob has to do repairs in the core, super death radiation room. Mouse horns in on the surfer. Is it true you do all your surfing alone? Have to. I've never found anyone who'll take the risks I like to take. Can't imagine where you'd find a girl like that. Suddenly the devil that killed Enzo in the game is back. What kind of PTSD is this? But wait, actually this entire show was just Enzo's dream. Can you imagine? Actually the system fuckery is causing undeleted RAM to bring them back to life. Imagine if the original kid Andrea showed up, wouldn't that be fucking weird? But it's pretty fun to see all these callbacks, like Andrea on her mega bike being chased by the user from the first episode pterodactyl planes and etc. But they do beat all the users and Enzo gets his revenge. That was... This guy's got some issues, man. Also, this fun random scene I like. Ah! Oh, that was close. We must leave here and quickly. We must not be caught. <laughs> Going somewhere, boys. <laughs> And remember this asshole that ruined everything? Hey! Is there room in this crowded show for a cameo by everyone's favorite talking television? No! Bob has to deal with ghost megabyte simulation, but fights through it anyway and fights through the distraction and saves the city. Eventually. Any time now. Um. Are, are you done? Cause 
because you really need to be done. There you go. Uh, system out of danger. Bob, are you all right? I'm okay. Really. I, I just need to rest a little. Here, let me help you. No, really. Let me. No way! Let me! <laughs> The girl's tasty, but where's all the food? We have survived Megabyte's bane, but Mainframe is still doomed. Cheery. These guys can't catch a break, can they? Fuck. Okay, in this fun episode, everyone is crowded in the principal office just waiting for death. They can't even take a shit. This show does not let up with the suffering, does it? Behind the curtain, our heroes are discussing all the fun ways that they're fucked. And then my favorite thing ever happens. The user's computer has to be billowing smoke right now and possibly on fire, and all he wants to do is play another fucking game. And losing this game, even if it runs somehow, will be the final nail in the coffin. It'll make all of them dead. But don't worry, Bob has a plan. Uh, do nothing and hope for the best? Bob. You're tired. Heck shows up with some freshly baked goodies. Bob is like, we should save this virus too, back her up. Bob, you're tired. And just like that, Hex is saved and registered. Welp, the user wins the game and probably has a big boner right now, little realizing he just fucked his computer over. And we have a pretty sad and dramatic look at everyone dying. Time to get a drink. What have you got to lose? Find a partner if you can. Full on apocalypse, boys. And everyone died, lol. Damn, my piece of shit computer died. Well, it was running slower and slower anyway, and always seemed to be full of viruses and problems. Maybe I should just throw it out the window and be done with it. This computer's a piece of shit. Oh fuck, wait a minute, my porn collection though. I have to try to get it back. Okay, restore everything. Please don't let me lose my porn. Please don't let me lose my porn. Please don't let me lose my porn. Alright, this is awesome. Everything's back to normal, you guys, and now we're treated to the greatest computer restoration scene in the history of computer restoration scenes. Wait, what's this asshole's house doing here? Hey, all the virus guys are free! Oh, great Norton's ghost! Oh, there it goes. Hex is back too. Oh, oh, that tickled. So many heartwarming moments. Hey, baby. What a way to go. <laughs> we did it! We did it, Andrea! We did it!
Don't ever leave me again. I promise. Man, what a perfect ending, and I mean absolutely perfect. Mom! Ah, oh, fuck, never mind. I had to ruin it. Hey, Bob, what happened to your hair? It's so cool. And your costume alpha new. I guess Dumb Matrix left himself in game sprite mode, so the system thought they needed him to be restored too. Ah, oh, what a fuck up. Who's the big ugly green guy? Oh no, now Mike's here. Guys, stop ruining this perfect ending. Why is he extra rubbery? Actually, we get a super fun recap of all the wacky happenings with an in-show play. It's actually pretty great and allows the characters to catch up too for those who weren't there during the key parts there. And that's all, folks. This show wrapped up with a very nice conclusion. And we even get that celebratory photo reel. What a great way to end the show on a super high note. This is just the perfect ending to a wonderful, innovative, groundbreaking show. <laughs> Hey guys, you'll never believe what I seen on TV the other day. Reboot! Reboot's back. Remember Reboot? Oh my gosh, I totally remember Reboot. It's back? Yeah, it's back. How's it back? It ended. It was it was over. Yeah, but they have to deal with Damon now. Remember Damon? Oh shit, I forgot about Damon. Yeah, everybody forgot about Damon. So Reboot's back. It's back. It's fucking back. Oh, I gotta watch the fucking Reboot! Alright, here we go. And yeah, legit, we actually had a conversation like that in high school that I remember. Reboot coming back was a total surprise at this point. And we get a more high-tech and polished than ever show with a new jazzed up intro. Alright, so we begin with a flashback when Enzo is even more of an annoying twerp and Dot dressed like a whore. And yeah, wow, there used to be a fully fleshed out Twin City. I wonder what happened to it. How is Dot not traumatized at this point? And there's even more shit to deal with. Put the net on the main screen. It's all green! Damon's infection grows. Enzo's with Andrea and her megabyte in the net running from Guardians and all hell breaks loose. Big shit show. Guardians attack under Damon's influence. And ah fuck, they just cleaned up the city, didn't they? Well, they get blown wide open to the net and are totally unprotected. Bob, we've gotta help Matrix fight the Guardians! Guardians? How do you not know what's going on, asshole? It's a total war zone, bud. All kinds of chaos and pandemonium. You know what this means, right? Yep, it's time to play a game. Bob sends Matrix into the game, and at this point, Matrix has no respect for Bob. Stop what you're doing. That's an order. <laughs> an order? And here's another. Go and defend that game. We can't afford to lose this sector now. I'll handle things here. Go! You heard the man, Sparky. We'll talk about this later. All right, it's finally time to take a look inside the supercomputer and finally meet Damon. It's only taken two hours, but new super virus Damon. I can't wait to see what this looks like. Oh, it's just an anorexic French chick. Um, okay. Meanwhile, Bob is trying to be a hippie pacifist and puts everyone in bubbles, but then gets tired and falls down right in a horny hex's arms. Like she really needs a piece. Mike shows up to be annoying and Damon kidnaps Bob, but Hex pulls a bait and switch and sends Mike away instead. Man, she should sell timeshares. What happened? What did you do? Nothing much, but I'm beginning to realize I've got a wicked sense of humor. <laughs> now, Bob, now, did I mention that I'm a close personal friend of Bob? Hmm? Several hundred times. Meanwhile, Hex is really wanting to bang. We could go down together. Bob pretends he'll have sex with her, but only if she repels the invaders. Okay. Wait here. A, a hex? One thing. You mustn't delete any of them. Just get them out of mainframe, okay? Okay. So she goes full tilt and blasts them out of the system, and then Mouse throws up a firewall. Meanwhile in the game, they're playing Austin Powers. Matrix and Enzo fittingly turn into Dr. Evil and Mini-Me, and they easily beat the user by shooting him in the face. Hex is like, I did the thing, now you gotta fuck me, that's the deal, that's the deal we made. Hex tries to force herself onto Bob, but suddenly things get weird with her icon and she gets covered in worms again. Only this time they talk. What? I, I am I 
can't believe it. What is it? You two look like you've seen a ghost. Sis, that's dad, isn't it? That's our dad! Stop shooting my dad! We get another flashback to her dad giving a speech to a young Dot prepping up for his wacky experiment. Dot, can you do me a favor? Anything, Dad. Can you, um, stop dressing like a skank? It's just hard to look like a competent scientist with my daughter making public appearances like this, you know? I need people to think I'm competent, right? Right. Y you think I'm competent, don't you? Yes, Dad. Like, you can say you think that, but you believe it, right? Like, I'm competent, right? Like, like tell me I'm competent. Please, I, need, I just need somebody to tell me I'm competent. I have to go now. Put some fucking clothes on! You were right. Meanwhile, little regular Enzo's having a mid-preteen crisis and thinks he's Matrix. I'm a guardian now, and I'm big! With a cool gun and a babe for a girlfriend, no one's gonna call me little Enzo ever again! Oh, no! From now on, you can call me... Little Matrix! Okay, yeah, fuck that noise. Let's see what the actual Matrix is up to. Matrix and his girl track some female guardian terrorist down to another system, and she looks very much like the other female guardian that, that Andrea murdered. But this one makes it easy. She murders herself. But it's a trap, and they get stuck in a weird system. Bob can't save them because he's too busy getting back to the future. This is a good time for the user to play a game, right? Bob tries to reboot, but he can't get her going and gets fucked sideways. Bob sucks now. Dot sucks too and is about to lose, but they're saved by... Hex? Who's now... the Statue of Liberty? I've lost my powers. Matrix and Andrea put on some mech suits. Matrix takes right after his mom, and they get their fight on. Matrix has a talk with Brainwash Turbo as Damon tries to grab him with this blue cube thing, but Andrea pushes him in the portal and gets God herself. Andrea! No! Andrea! Andrea. Welcome. My lady. Okay, this episode starts off with a super fascinating flashback with some viral racism towards Kilobyte. One more virus for the deletion chamber. He can hear you. So? Hey, Kilobyte, ready for oblivion? Do you have to be so callous? It's a virus, cadet. A dirty, no-use virus. Bob's younger days. A super viral upgrade happens and he knocks out Bob and kills the racist guardian. And at the same time, Dot's dad's portal experiment happens and Gigabyte comes in and causes the big boom. Whoa. I am Gigabyte! Bob has a talk with Turbo and finds out no Guardians have key tools anymore. They all ran away when the Guardians became infected assholes, making Bob the last Guardian with powers. Hex is playing with worms and Dot gives her the dirtiest look of all time. Man, if looks could kill, Hex would be dead in like one episode. Dot is super salty that everyone got to make it with Bob except for her. Dot puts her salt aside to take Hex and find her dad while ignoring all the other more important things going on. This guy lets Damon know that they can't break into Mainframe because of Mouse and her hacker skills. So Mainframe is legit, complete, and totally safe from Damon. So she punishes this guy by making him do a countdown. 101. 100. 11. 101. Oh. We get another flashback showing how Gigabyte gets sucked into Mainframe and blows up in half, creating traditional Hex and Megabyte. I am become Gigabyte, destroyer of systems! And that is why Hex's home is all fucked up. She lives in a destroyed hard drive. Anywho, Hex makes Dot a new father, but they can't touch. No, you cannot touch me. The laws. Bob and Fong have a chat, but Fong has some bad news. I've been going over your scans, and I'm afraid there is something terribly wrong. Merging with Glitch didn't work. So you know. Yeah, Glitch was damaged. 
We both knew the risks, but it was the only way. And do you also know that continued use of your glitch powers will result in total fragmentation? But I'm a guardian. I can't go against my code. Yeah, they had to neuter Bob somehow. He was just too powerful. Another flashback to where Bob steals his dead partner's glitch and meets Dot for the first time. <laughs> this is your fault! <laughs> Love at first sight. Alright, let's go back to the present and talk about Damon some more. You have to find a way to destroy her. You better than any sprite know how I feel about that. Bob, this isn't the time for your theories. This isn't a small sealed system we're talking about. It's the entire net. Face it, mainframe was an experiment that didn't work. Didn't work? Have you seen hexadecimal? She's cured. And megabyte? I kept them contained. In time, I could have reprogrammed them. I still believe he could have been turned. <laughs> oh, Bob, what kind of sweet, sweet drugs are you on, man? Wait, did you say Mainframe was an experiment? As in you were intentionally fucking around with viruses you could have stopped? At the expense of all the citizens? This makes Bob the biggest villain of all because he allowed everyone to get tortured by viruses for this experiment of his. And then Mouse and Matrix go in a full impulse mode and leave to stop Damon. Even though if Mouse gets captured, they'll be able to break into Mainframe and kill everybody. What a silly risk. Let's hope it works out. Mouse is outside the firewall. And she has all the encryption codes. Gun. Command line. Targeting. Hi, X. Hi, lover. Andrea! There's someone you've got to meet. Hello, Matrix. I've heard so much about you. is useless here. Fucking mouse. Ah, Enzo is playing catch with his worm dad. Hi, Fong. Dad's a no monster now. It's so cool. He can change shape and things. Hey, there's Frisket. Get this kid some Ritalin already. Hex really needs to get laid. And this is the moment where Dot finally snaps. She actually tells Enzo to get lost in the game and become another Matrix. What? You cannot be serious. Come back. Save us. Dot's breakdown continues as she has a plan to blow up Mainframe using the gateway to kill everyone. This is thin, Dot. She tells Bob to leave, but he tells her she's being crazier than Hex. Bob, stand at the doors. If you won't leave, you can at least be bait. <laughs> Live bait? Psychopath much? Here comes Damon. How long can they hold her off? Not long at all. And she's not impressed by Virus's turn, Statue of Liberties. Forgive me, my lady. No. Wow, that was a quick game. Enzo pussies out, but that means him, Doggo, and the dumbass robots are not infected. Enzo goes back into Guardian mode and makes his dog maul Matrix while doing some Sith Lord on brainwashing. Go to the dark place! Use your hate! You hate viruses! You hate Megabyte! Megabyte? Ah! Brainwashed Bob is helping Damon take over the remaining systems, but he's dying extra hard. Hex find out and drinks all the core energy to get her powers back. We have a pretty epic fight scene that seems way too short, so I can just show you the whole thing. Get away from my sprite! <laughs> about what'll happen if she wins. Now you're really starting 
to annoy me. I wish this fight was longer because it seems like Hex had a lot more tricks up her sleeve that she didn't get to use yet, like null attacks and stuff. This fight is actually stopped by a bullshit sand timer necklace. Her time runs out and she disappears. What kind of cop out is this? And now the countdown begins and soon everyone will die. Time to dance with a corpse. <sighs> But they find a solution, sends Hex through the thing to spread a cure. Give me the cure and I'll fix everything. Hex, you won't survive this. It's a one-way trip. Total fragmentation. But you will survive. Virus hater! Learn from this. Here, young guardian, a gift. So you don't turn out like him. Bob, I have always loved you. Dot, look after him and be happy. No! Hex went from crazy virus to hero and had the best character arc in this whole show, hands down. Sorry, disgruntled old man Enzo. I infect the entire net. I have spread through systems, peoples, and cities from this place, mainframe, my format, virus, the queen of chaos. Hey. Stay with us, okay? You mustn't leave me. Not again. We need you. I need you. <laughs> I love you. Please don't go. Stay. Marry me. <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. Well, that's a good place to end the episode. Heck, why not end the whole series here? Perfect ending. Wait, why is the episode still playing? What the fuck? Marry him? I don't think so. Hi, Dot. Not thinking of another plan, are you? <laughs> hey, who's he? Oh, no. Two bobs? How can this be? What even is this show anymore? So now there's two bobs and nobody knows which one is real and it's a total shit show. Matrix is super bored because all the viruses are gone. After being in so much constant turmoil his whole life, his only source of entertainment now is forcing these police dudes to shoot at him with real ammo for funsies. It's kind of interesting when you think about it. He's been through so much shit he can't handle boring peace times. Well, this is crazy. I nearly hit him there. Remember what he said he'd do to us if we didn't try to hit him? What in the net are you playing at, Matrix? Training? What does it look like? With live ammo? Our enemies don't use blanks. It's over, Sparky. Damon's gone. We're home. We won, remember? Yeah, but... What do we do now? We relax, lover. The fighting's over. Dot continues to lose sanity. Your scans proved nothing. Which Bob's the original? Here comes a game and the whole crew assembles, but Glitch Bob gets reboot shamed. Remember what happened the last time you tried to reboot? What happened? Bob, can you reboot? Well, yeah. Do you mean he can't? They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Dot, is this wise? We don't know anything about this guy. I trust him. They ask you how you are. To make himself feel better, Glitch Bob takes Matrix's girlfriend and annoying kid to the CD bar. A little bit of clone to clone support. Well, I think you're the real deal, Bob. And I don't care. I'm a copy of a backup, and I'm okay. Us copies have got to stick together. Hey, you're right. What difference does it make? 
I've always been me. But Matrix isn't the only one missing some boring times, as some previous Vow or henchmen of Megabyte are causing some commotion. Nice here. Normal Bob and Matrix are playing Pokemon, but Bob is really rusty. Seems weird he's so confused by game stuff after having so much experience. Bob becomes a big ass Pokemon. Whoa, I'm a monster. This is different. Um, and, uh, Matrix, uh, a little help? Sorry, Bob. A trainer can only call strategy. Help! I can't! There must be something you could do. You know, Bob, well, I don't think you're supposed to do that. Oh, man, what a rush. It's just like old times, huh, Bob? Couldn't have done it without you, Enzo. Enzo? I'm sorry, I meant Matrix. Hey, fancy a game of jet ball? No. Yeah, that's what I thought. Let's check on Dot. Dad? Dad, can you hear me? Bob is Bob, and Glitch Bob isn't. But he is. Are you with me? I'm trying to be. What do I do, Mouse? Well, stand still for a start. You're driving me crazy. I think you should choose Bob. But Glitch Bob saved us from Megabyte, and... Okay, choose Glitch Bob. But what about Bob? Bob looks like Bob. Well... Sounds like you're busy. Catch you later, sugar. Glitch Bob asks Fong to help him separate from Glitch so he can look like regular Bob to compete with other Bob, but begging for a password is not a good look. What's the password for the archive? Maybe I can splice some code together and... Fong, what is the password? Password? Uh, yes, I... Uh, well, it's... um. Uh... Oh, this is great. Now you don't trust me. Oh, do not be silly. You don't think I'm the original. Yes, I do. Well, then give me the password. Oh, that, um... And then we have a big game super party with probably one of the most fun games in a while and the most players. Even Fong and Hack and Slash are here, all in wacky forms. Reboot. Reboot! What happened to Fong and the idiots? Yogurt, I am. <clears throat> I am. <clears throat> We're here. Right in front of you. Yeah, and we heard the idiots line. It's another annoying raccoon game, but this time they're tiny and have to find creative ways to fight them. Meanwhile, Bob sweet talks Mouse to letting him into the archives to play with some dangerous shit. Well, I can help you there. And you're in. Oh, I don't know what to say. Thanks, Mouse. Invite me to the wedding. Bob goes too far in a few places and seemingly destroys himself just to separate from Glitch. Just to look like Bob and get with that cold, cold, superficial lady. Bob! Yes, Bob is all messed up because of you. This is all your fault. Marry me. Oh, Bob. Wow, what a super bitch. So, uh, I guess we're getting ready for a wedding then. Insensitive bitch. I've never seen anything like it. He's completely non responsive. Some sort of crystalline state. What are his energy signs? He doesn't have any. I'm not getting any BPM. We're losing him. Move it, people. Dot has a great bachelorette party. This binome does some sexy dancing, but honestly, who really wants to fuck a binome? Oh, well, they're having a great time anyway. I have never seen her so happy. Somehow little kid Enzo's hosting the bachelor party, so that's pretty stupid.
That time Hex touched Enzo's icon pays off as the power brings his dad back to life. Something funny here with Matrix. Bob asks Matrix to be the best man, right? But he's then replaced by Enzo because Dot needs Matrix to walk her up the aisle because her dad can't. But suddenly her dad can because of the thing. So Matrix hasn't got shit to do, basically. It's funny. He just got kicked out of the wedding. All right, it's time for that wedding. This is the happiest second of my life. I'm out of ideas. Nothing can penetrate. Whatever that is, what energy remains within his body is fading. We're losing him, sir. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. Glitch Bob comes out of his weird, freaky dream coma, and all the glitches return to do open Bob surgery. Look, the key tools, they're returning. They're trying to save him. But some bad news. Bob's okay. Code doesn't match what we have on file. Uh, so, looks like he's the copy. That's gonna hurt. They ask you how you are. And if any sprite knows why Dot and Bob should not be joined together, they should speak now or forever hold their peace. I do. Oh, Bob, you're okay. I'm pretty far from okay. You can't do this, Dot. I love you. I've had enough of this. <laughs> Glitch! Energy! No! Stop! Both of you! But, but Dot. Dot! Bob, I'm sorry, but... But... I'm sorry. They ask... But Dot, he must be the real one. He's got Glitch. It doesn't matter, Enzo. Bitch! I'm the copy. Goodbye, Glitch Bob, you unexplained weirdo. Should I continue? Yes. <laughs> what are you doing, Glitch? What's happening, happening to, to me? me? What's happening to you? Look at him! Well, that was a twist. That was a Pepsi twist. These aren't Pepsis. They're Pepsi twists. You're, you're a bunch of bloody magicians. And we're not the Osborns. We're not. We're, we're the, the Osmonds. Osmonds! I see my charade is at an end. A pity. We would have made a perfect couple. Megabyte's back and he looks fucking awesome and they have a pretty wacky fight with classic Bob. He looks like a predator or a velociraptor or something. Also, something I didn't notice until making this video, he growls a lot. It's actually quite interesting to see Megabyte back like this and changed from the web as a Trojan horse virus. Yeah, it's Megabyte again, but it's Trojan Horse stuff, so that's new ground. It's fun. I like it. Screw you. Like, he's just fed up with these guys and just wants to dick with them now. It's awesome. Why, Megabyte? Why do this? <laughs> it amused me. With brand new powers like Acid Spit, Dot's psychological destruction is complete. Ah, the blushing bride. One final kiss. He's out cold. But I just saw Specky outside. Megabyte. He can shapeshift. How? The web's changed him. He's become a Trojan horse virus. So how are we going to find him? What are we going to do, Bob? I'm... You can't possibly want to save a virus. I'm not sure. Okay, I need to stop for a moment and talk about Bob's face. What the fuck is wrong with it? Remember, we haven't seen classic Bob since the classic era, season 2. 
Of course, with limitations at the time, he wasn't very expressive or animated, but this became part of his character. We were used to him being a calm, not-so-expressive dude. Now suddenly with advanced animating advancements, it's like they're all overcompensating and too expressive. They all look like coked-up fiends. Just look at classic Bob next to cocaine skinny Bob, see? Everybody looks like not how you were used to them growing up, so something's wrong here. The whole town must be full of Trojan horse viruses or something. So pitter patter, let's get at her. Okay, time for the next episode, and what an amazing name. So, it's confirmed. Megabyte has Trojan horse viral capacity now. He can duplicate any form. He could be anywhere, right in front of us, and we never know. No way! He could be here! He could even be me! What if I Megabyte now? Take it down a notch, bud. I'm sending a viral incident team immediately. They'll be there in nanoseconds. No! What? No. Keep your executioners where they are. We'll deal with this ourselves. <sighs> so now you want to save Megabyte. Still clinging to your radical theories, huh, Bob? Okay, there's no hope for Bob at this point. Even now, after all the stuff that happened, Bob still wants to be Megabyte's friend. I mean, come on, guy. He probably thought he could have got chummy with the web creature, too. Heck, even Damon. Like they would all just be friends and hang out together at Thanksgiving dinner or something. This is what I think is going on inside Bob's head. This has to be the thumbnail, doesn't it? Okay, back to Megabyte fucking with people. This is Mike the TV with a breaking news story! Oh no, this just in! Be alarmed. Be very alarmed! Megabyte has returned to mainframe! With new viral powers! Oh, he could be anywhere! He could be anyone! Is that really your wife, Mr. Norton? Is that really your pussy, Mrs. Slocum? Trust no one, for no one is safe from his evil viral clutches! Oh no, panic! Panic now, like only you know how to do. What in the net is Mike doing? I don't know, but when I get my hands on him... This is just causing mass panic. Hey, it's not Mike, it's Megabyte. What? Oh, of course. Panic only helps him, and it causes us nothing but trouble. Megabyte scares the town people again as Fong. <laughs> This is a system-wide announcement on behalf of the principal office. Due to some circumstances, we are advising citizens to return to their homes, file lock doors and windows, and remain there until further notice. We apologize for any inconvenience, but assure you that normal status will be resumed as soon as possible. There is no cause for alarm. Well, Maybe a small amount of cause for alarm. Just make sure you stay in pairs at all times, and do not walk the city alone. Oh, and uh, before I forget, here is an artist's impression of Megabyte's new form. Actually, this is just senile old Fong being senile. Meanwhile, some former Megabyte henchmen remember the good old days as Bike shows up to be annoying. Uh, we'll teach him the meaning of the word respect. Respect? And what would a neo-viral know about respect? Watch it, Mike! You'll be the first to get to war when the revolution comes! Revolution? Oh, yeah, right! And how will you do that? Hmm? Together, you have the CPU power to drive a calculator! Ah, that's it! I'm gonna change your channel, pal! Stay where you are. Ah, good doctor. Keeping the faith, I see. What? I have returned. Now submit your PIDs and join me. Together we will welcome a new viral dawn. Do this willingly and you will reap the rewards of the victorious. Resist and... <laughs> Well, you get the picture. Megabyte is so cool right now. They might regret to wish being viral again, eh? 
They need a plan, so Bob comes up with an idea. Ask Dot to think for him. The nasty lady who rejected him? I need a word with Dot. I'll be moseying along. No, no, wait. Don't leave. What if that's not Bob? What? Oh, brother. No, uh, how do we know it's really Bob? He could be. Megabyte! Yeah. Run away! <laughs> oh, some bodyguards. Sis, of course it's Bob. I've been with him all along. Dot, it's me. It's really me. Can't you tell? No. No, I can't. I don't blame her either because, again, this does not look like Bob. This is Bob. Anywho, Dot's big plan is to expose a fake gateway command for Megabyte to steal. But it's such an obvious trick, right? Megabyte plays along and steals it with a surprise pop-up army. Where does he get those ABCs from? It didn't take him long to build an army again, did it? They follow him with a fake ABC vehicle. It's such a slap together plan, Dot is so lazy these days. Anywho, they capture Megabyte. No! Glitch portal. Dot. We've got him. He's in the holding cell. It's a little too easy, right? Well done, Bob. Dot, I uh Yes, Bob. We make a great team. Eh. <laughs> So I imagine the real Gateway Command is in a safe place. The safest. Safer than the Archive? The Core Room. <laughs> now why didn't I think of that? You must be slipping, Megabyte. Great job telling Megabyte where the real Gateway is, asshole. Time for the hippie Bob treatment. So what now? Deletion? No, just a scan. I don't believe in deletion. You can't go against your code. And neither can you. That's the problem. It's not your fault. You're programmed to be this way. We've just got to work out a way to reprogram you. So, I won't be a virus? That's the plan. Ah, so, a fate worse than deletion. And they call me a monster. Um, guys? Does this mean I can go now? No, lock him up further. Fuck that guy. Scan complete. This isn't possible. There's nothing here. Or there. Bob, drop the firewall. I can't. He'll... Matrix! <laughs> It's an alias! It's not him! Where are you? <laughs> yes. Dot! We don't have Megabyte! It was an alias! He must be in the war room with you! One of you is Megabyte! Do you understand? He's tricked us! Get out of there now! Hey, who let that asshole out? Oh fuck, he's the dog! All hell breaks loose as Megabyte played everyone and is inside the principal office. Megabyte zombies up the troops. Tries to get the girls too, but Fong blocks it and is captured by Megabyte for like the how manyth time? Poor fucking Fong. Robo Dad tries to run away with Enzo, but gets infected by the noodles. Everyone is running around like confused, freaked out rats in a cage. Totally useless. Time for a classic Megabyte speech, or is it? Attention. As you are no doubt aware, the principal office is now under my complete control. You're probably looking forward to one of my erudite speeches about me, Megaframe, the new viral dawn, etc., etc. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to disappoint you. 
There is no grand scheme here. This is about revenge. Viruses are predatory by design. And it is time for me to follow my function. Oh, they're fucked now. Megabyte is in complete control as a Trojan horse virus. He even got Fong, Enzo, and the dad as prisoners. Chilling stuff. Prepare yourselves for the hunt.